Hello, welcome to the Battling Barrow and another video where we um, have a look at the Battle Masters set I got uh, last year. Uh, my plans for for this video are to uh, hopefully, during the recording of this to the end of it, complete the actual model collection and get that complete because I've uh, found some uh, Lord Knights on eBay that I've bought so I'm hoping they'll arrive between now and the end of the video so we can have a look at that and get it complete but the main purpose of this video is all about the tower um, I want to build it paint it add to it etc so that's what we're going to be doing in this video mainly so yeah let's uh, have a look at the tower now the tower looks like this when it's separated um, on the back here have little letters, so it's A, B, C, D, and this being E. But there's going to be a lot of tidying up to do. Whoever owned this before had to clip these nasty sprue burrs off, so I've got all these going all the way around. And also on some of the walls themselves, so I'm not too sure if I'm going to glue it together. Um, in case if one day I ever want to take it back to factory stripping paint off is one thing but gluing it especially with plastic glue that will melt it it will affect it so it goes together quite well we will have to remove this label so I'm thinking I'm possibly not going to uh, glue it together I'm just going to assemble it and I think I'm going to undercoat it while it's assembled here's my plan but first I've got some tidying up to do this is the tower when it's all assembled um, Still not too sure whether I should glue it or not because you do get some gnarly gaps here that I could potentially fill. I'm just then loathe to. I think I am going to just stick with it like this. I don't really want to do anything too permanent to it. I know paint is somewhat permanent, but you can strip it. As soon as I glue this and fill it, that's it. Um, holds together quite well it's not, top comes off easy enough but you know it holds together it holds its shape without glue so um, so I think I'm just gonna leave it like that just got to carefully remove this sticker now pro browned with a sculpting tool until hopefully I can find ah, there go. a uh, loose edge there was one there I'll put it there so I'll just run this tool down it's going to be a very Put this safely to one side and now this allows me now to spray this piece and my spray of choice for this color would be a bit of a weird one I'm gonna do it in wraith bone because I want that mortar to be mortar color rather than black and I think I'm gonna paint it in situ like this rather than individual pieces this is what it's going to mainly look like still still not convinced about not gluing it I still don't know oh, if only I could go into the future and ask you guys right I think it's decision time now I I am going to assemble it I'm going to glue it I and fill it I can't handle these this is a really nice piece for, especially for the time it was made and if I'm going to paint it and make it look good, you know, I can't have 
gaps like this. I mean, it's, it'd be okay as you know something you'd take apart and put together again. But if I want it to look good, I mean, particularly here, I mean that should be one piece really in my mind. Um, yeah, it doesn't quite fit together quite well. This corner here. So I'm gonna plastic glue it together. Okay, it's done. Just hold it in place while the glue sets on the top. Um, I guess you could prise it apart if you wanted to. There's still some gnarly gaps. I'm gonna let the glue set and I come in, fill these in. And some you can see that these edges, you know, they're blocks, they're not gonna be solid, but I want to get some mortar in there of some sort. I'm gonna do this, let's do it properly. My thinking behind it was I would never be able to take it apart and put it in the box, you know. But such a nice piece this, I'd have this on gonna have to display it on my terrain shelf. It can be used for other games then. It's not like I'm ever gonna sell sell it when it get back to factory kind of thing. So yeah, let's let that dry. So I'm just gonna mix up some mini part. Uh, using some white ones, it's fine, sort of super fine. Not that I need fine detail for this, and I'm just then gonna come in and try and fill these gaps around these crenellations here. With a water down finger, I'm gonna try and smooth it over as much as possible. Sure, it's working, but go oh, home. And on these top bits here, this is a separate bit, but I still don't want that massive gap in, so I'm just going to try and add in some what would be mortar, really. So I'm not trying to make it look like one piece, but just don't want that gap. And then next same sort of principle of these edge bits so when I use the mini putt to add in some mortar and here we are that's it all filled in I might have to sand a few bits off when it's dry especially when I've tried to make sure this looks like one piece but we'll see Let's see so for now I'm gonna let the mini part set and I'll come back to it in the end I just did put some Really pop mortar in all these bits here. I think it looks for the best. Try not to fill it, but just act as mortar. Whilst I am waiting for the mini part to go off, um, I can turn my attention to here. Um, it's a bit smooth and plain, and likewise, this top stop here and these steps. So, coming with some watered down PVA. I'm just going to add some uh, dirt and gravel in there where it's blown in and blown to the corners. And likewise on the door here some here the corners soft in there so on each individual step Not too much around where the door would open just want some build up in the corners there and the steps just 
This is something where less is definitely more. I've undercoated it in rough bone um, because I want the mortar to be this color rather than black. I've undercoated in rough bone and I'm hoping I can just get away with dry brushing. I think on this one here, I may have to paint the individual bricks, but the rest of it, I think we can get away with dry brushing. So let's try that now. I'm just going to dry brush with a grey, mid tone grey. So, after the dry brush of grey, I also use the normal brush just to go over the top bit here, just to fill it in properly. What I'm going to do now is going to come in with various different greys. I'm using uh, Mechanicus, Dawnstone, and Administratum, and some browns, Tan and Sand. What's it? Scrag brown, Morfang brown, and I'm just going to use these and pick out individual pot bricks just to add a bit of visual interest to it. That's done. I'm gonna come in and do a dry brush of a tan colour. Uh, just all over. Maybe. Apply a uh, black wash, um, heavy on the crenellations and the side bits here. Not too much on the uh, I don't want it pooling, so I mean, I want to come in and then re soak up as much as possible the uh, wash so you don't get any of these heavy pooling areas. It'll work somewhat quick, you don't want the wash drying out. Coming with a bit of rag and try and get the worst of those pooling areas up. So I want the mortar to be more coloured and not black. So this is just the wash is just really to uniform the. Uh, the look of it so you end up with something like that. Undercoat all the woodwork in Doom Ball Brown and then dry brush with uh, Morn Fang Brown. That's quite a heavy dry brush, almost more of an overbrush, I guess. Wash the uh, woodwork with um, a Grax Earth Shade, and whilst you've got that out. On the uh, sand that I put in, I'm just going to give that a wash, just to dirty that up. Once the door's dry, paint the uh, furniture black, and also do the same on the trapdoor. Still with the uh, with the black, I'm just going to come in and paint a thin line into the slots of each window, to the slot of each window. And whilst we've got the black out, we can fill in the culvert opening here. We're just gonna paint those a metallic. We come back and wash out of no and all, and then some rock and flesh shade for a bit of uh, rust on it, but let that dry for now. flag goes back on here and there's sort of a flag banner bit in here so I'm going to paint that using this bright yellow 
hopefully it should match up quite well to this uh, this is old school really old school uh, bad moon yellow I'm just gonna get that on there And that will definitely need a second coat once it's dry. This is either going to be the best idea I've ever had or the worst because it's quite small detail and I am not that good a painter. I'm going to paint the raised areas here in a bright red to match the sticker. too bad, see how I feel at the end. Just want to get the uh, sticker back in place so I don't lose it or damage it. in place I think the red looks okay it looks like it's fitting beforehand it looked very rude so yeah pleased with that I have to glue it back in but yeah like that and just so the piece doesn't look like it's been plonked on top of the ground like it's been there and the grass is growing out I do this on a lot of my sort of buildings just put a little thin layer of watered down PVA paint on the bottom, coming with my grass texture of choice. This is Woodland Scenic Green Blend. Just apply a little bit along the bottom. Done that all the way around. It just sort of makes, once you put it on a grass mat or something, it just makes it look like it's not just plonked on top of it, like it's coming out, the grass is growing around it. And whilst I've got the watered down PVA, I'm gonna put some splodges on the more horizontal parts of the piece so yeah, I'm going to use some static grass because I like using this as sort of a, a moss really nothing too heavy Coming with a few splotches of glue here and there, and I'll pick out some of this leaf litter, which is quite common nowadays. I've had this for years when it was when I first saw it. It was a revelation to me. It's like oh, wow, you can get small leaves on your war game in there. Tabletop. So this is how we're looking now. Um, really like it. Just want to add a vine on because this wall here sort of has the least going on. You got here with the door and the flag, here with the real bow damage, here with the stairs and the door, and this one just has the culvert and the window. I'm going to do make uh, some vines. I'm going to do that out of strands of liking I've just teased apart like this I'm gonna come in and get into some uh, water down PVA bit by bit and build up the vine Probably going to want to wipe your fingers quite regularly so the lichen will stick to the way you want it to go rather than to your fingers. I'll leave it like that. 
that. I might play over a bit off camera, but hopefully you get the idea. I think that is pretty much it. And let it all dry, and we'll have a look. And the tower is now done. That's what it looks like. Actually really happy with this. Really, really pleased how this turned out. It actually doesn't look like a piece of scenery from a uh, toy game from the 90s. It looked really cool. I'd actually use this for I need a little ruined tower like this. Uh, in the meantime, as well, in this video, uh, I had ordered some, found some uh, Lord Knights online. Uh, and they came on these MDF bases. So obviously he was using them and he actually sort of was in the listing as Age of Sigmar, so he's obviously using for Age of Sigmar. Uh, so I got these. Um, problem is, I didn't have the stickers or anything on them, but ho oh hum. Um, so they're already painted. I've just sort of amended the painting um, and tried to do a freehand on the shield to make up for the sticker. Obviously, no pendant sticker. We moved him from those bases, put them onto some uh, square bases. I've obviously painted Goblin Green. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I would have kept the slots on them if I was doing it myself. Like I've done with other ones. You do have to trim the slots ever so slightly to get them onto a, a base, but oh hum, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so I've just touched up the painting a wee bit. Um, so he had purple here, so I just painted it red to match the shield design, which is red, blue, and uh, yellow. Add some sort of Free-handed fleur de lis on the cape, just had a bit of interest. Painted the spear silver, uh, washed the gold parts on them. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So that means model-wise, I am now complete with Battle Masters. And I've got these things to do, but I might not do anything with these. They're green. I guess they're meant to be sort of bushes. I don't know. I might come back to these in the future, but for now, I think I'm just going to leave them as this green. Uh, I don't think painting them is going to really make a world of difference to the detail or anything. So I'm going to leave these, just put these back in the box and use them as is. And in the future, once I've had a few games, I might decide to sort of make something a bit more 3D. But I'm going to keep those just as is. But yeah, really pleased with that. And that's the uh, my Battle Masters series of videos complete, I think. Um, yeah. The next thing to do is to try and get a gaming with it, which is looking more and more doable. But I'm going to leave this video here uh, for now. Uh, to say thank you for watching. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for Battle Masters, uh, let me know. I do want to sort of track down the other expansions, even though it's just more models, really. But I do want to track them down. So perhaps if you see them on eBay, give me a shout. Uh, and I shall try and have a bid. But yeah, guys, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Till the next video. Take care.